Welcome everyone to Vested Interest. This is Shane back again for another Stock Pick of the Day video. It is September 19th. We are going to take a look at one out of the material sector today. Lando Basil. And if you are a dividend growth investor, hit that subscribe button down below. Give me a thumbs up. Hit that notification bell so you're notified whenever we post any new content. Join us here on this journey to financial freedom. Join the Vested Interest community, building a community of like-minded dividend growth investors so we can share our experiences. Stocks like this, I do a stock pick of the day series Monday through Thursday every week. So come on back and join me. And again, hit that subscribe button down below so that you can be part of the vested interest community. Let's take a look at Lionel Basil and see if there is any potential value here. A lot of red in the market the last few days with the Fed meeting again. I'm sure a lot of people are starting to worry whether or not they will raise those rates again. I think we're due for one more rate hike. It may not be in this meeting, but I think by the end of the year, we're gonna get one more. They really wanna get inflation under control, but that is for another video. Let's look at Lionel Basil. Let's jump right in. So if you wanna know more about this company, check them out, www.lyondobazel.com. That's www.lyondellbazel.com. That is their homepage where I pulled this information from. Nearly 70 years of innovation with a nearly 70 year long legacy of game-changing innovation, our company has developed new products and technologies that, that serve as a bedrock of the chemical industry. Below are some of our key contributions. All right, so 53 to 54 predecessor company scientists Carl Ziegler and Giulio Nada make breakthrough discoveries in the creation of polyethylene and polypropylene. PE and PP resins are used today to make numerous products, including automobile parts, surgical gowns, children's toys, wind turbines, and water pipes. They were jointly awarded the Nobel Prize in Chemistry in 1963. Very interesting. You can see some of the other high notes here. Predecessor company, Atlantic Richfield. And there have been a lot of mergers and acquisitions with this company over the years. If you were to go to their homepage, you can see that clearly. I just snipped some of the highlights. Predecessor company, Atlantic Richfield company, ARCO, develops the POTBA process. Propylene oxide with tertiary butyl alcohol as the co-product. PO is used in numerous applications, including bedding, furniture, carpets, and car seats. You can start to see how many products they have their hands in. Basil and Lando, two separate companies, and Basil was made up of two other companies, and Lando merged to become Lando Basil Industries in 2007. They complete another acquisition of Solve Engineer Polymers, so polymers, polypropylenes. I mean, again, their hands are in a lot of plastics, uh, fuels, a lot of different uh, industries, and two, they have had their troubles. 2010, they emerged from Chapter 11 bankruptcy, right? So they have had their troubles. They're not without their, their uh, downside right? risks. Every company has downside risks, so be aware of those. And that brings us to 2018, uh, and the history went all the way through 2020. Lionel Basil completed the acquisition, so another acquisition of A. Showman Inc., a leading global supplier of high-performance plastic compounds, composites and powders. The acquisition more than doubled Lionel Basil's existing compounding business and broadened the company's reach into growing high margin end markets such as automotive, construction materials, electronic goods, and packaging. So again, automotive industry, construction industry, electronics, and packaging. So they have their plant, their hands in a lot of different industries all around. Again, www.lionelbasil.com if you want to check them out and learn more about the company. So here is the reason we are looking at them down 2.61% on the day, closed out the day at $97.91. We are talking about Lionel Basil Industries, ticker LYB. Looks like they are also down in the after hours, uh, even on top of what they were down during the day. 52 week range, as low as $71.46, as high as $102.05. They are creeping closer to their 52 week low. I would say they are still closer to their 52 week high though right now. So further to drop for me to be interested. I am long, we will see my position here in a little bit. Uh, average volume 1.9 billion, today's was 2.8 and a sell off pretty much throughout the day from start to finish. Looks like they may have started creeping up around 1 p.m. and recovered a little bit into the uh, evening hours, but again, down in after hours right now. So just a sell off from start to finish. Market cap of 31.742 billion, a beta of 1.23. So they are vo more volatile than the overall market. Price to earnings ratio PE on this one is $15.13 per share. Decent PE on this one. Earnings per share, nice EPS sitting at $6.47 per share. They have an earnings date coming up sometime between October 26th and October 30th. 
for dividend is $4.88. They are a quarterly payer and they do pay some special dividends. We will see that here in a little bit as well. Very nice, very high dividend yield on this one, 4.85%. Their ex-dividend date was August 25th. It looks like they paid out on September 5th. I received dividends on September 5th. And their payout ratio is just below that 75% threshold that I like. Uh, and we'll see the other uh, one shows about 77. I'm going to call it 75%. I like 75% or lower, uh, usually with room to grow. Uh, but this one is right up against that benchmark for me. And Yahoo Finance has a one-year target estimate of $189. I'm not affiliated with Yahoo Finance. just one of the sources that I like to go to. And if you were to go to them and you were to get into statistics, we're going to look at that to see if dividend yield theory says this one is potentially undervalued. And to do that, you'd go down to dividend under statistics. You'd go down to dividends and splits. You'd look at their five-year average dividend yield of 5.05%. You compare it to its current 4.85 or over here, forward annual dividend yield 4.85, same number. And since this number is lower than their five-year average, that speaks to some overvaluation on this one. And that's not surprising since it is right up against their 52-week high here, right? So we want more of a pullback on this one so that we not only can get it at fair value, but preferably at a bit of a margin of safety. So a little bit more of a pullback on this one is needed, at least according to dividend yield theory for this one to be in the wheelhouse for us. You'll see my cost basis here in a little bit. Now, I like to go into financials. You're going to find a lot of good information there. You're going to find the balance sheet, the income statement, debt to equity ratios. Is revenue growing? Are they buying back shares? You can find all that information. We're going to look at a couple things. Free cash flow. We want growing free cash flow because we want growing dividends as dividend growth investors. And to get growing dividends, you need growing free cash flow because that's what they're paid out of. So 2019, we're looking at 2.2 billion. 2020 was a drop to 1.4 billion. And this is, is a cyclical company. So that is to be expected from now on uh, the end of time. You're going to have times whenever this business in particular does have big drops and big run-ups because it is cyclical in nature. 2020 to 2021, big jump up to 5.7, drop back down from 21 to 22, down to 4.2. But overall, from 2019 to 2022, you do have a positive dividend growth. It looks like to date right now in 2023, about 3.2 billion. So it looks like we might surpass what we had in 2022, or at least get pretty close to what we saw there. And one of the other things I like to like, or like to like to like, like to see is the repurchase of capital stock right here. You can see they are repurchasing their own shares. So even though it was only 2.2 billion here in 2019, they also bought a big chunk of shares back. Now that went down in 2020. So the drop in free cash flow is not accounted for in the stock uh, repurchases here. Big free, but they, again, not as big in 2021 as it was in 2019 for repurchasing shares and not as big in 2022 either. But they are repurchasing shares, so that is nice to see. Let's keep on going here. And I always recommend more than one source. So another one that I like is stockanalysis.com. And they have 17 stock analysts that have taken a look at this. They call it a consensus hold. And I would agree with them here. I am looking for more of a pullback here below my cost basis. We'll see that here in a moment. They have a low estimate of $80 and I would like it back in the $80 range. That would be a 18.29% decrease from where it currently sits. They have an average estimate of $100. That would be a 2.13% increase from where it currently sits at $97.91. And if it happened to hit their high of $118, that would be a 20.52% increase in the stock price. All the while, you could collect that 4.8% dividend yield if you were to buy them today. I would not recommend that. Again, this would be a hold for me. I have been holding on this one. I have not been adding. We'll see my cost basis here in a minute. Now, I like to look, get into statistics here as well, and I like to look at return on equity and return on invested capital. I like 10% or better for both. As you can see, the return on equity here, ROE, is sitting at 16.7%, so that beats the 10% that I look for. Now, return on invested capital is a little lower than I'd like. At 8%, I like 10% or better, but it's pretty close. I wouldn't split hairs on that one. But this is what I don't like to see, right? EPS forecasted growth over the next five years, I like 5% or better. This is sitting at negative 0.5%, 4%. So they see some uh, downturn on the EPS growth here. Uh, so that is not good to see. And they also see, which makes sense, that the revenue growth forecast is negative as well. So if this company was to be flat, that would be a good thing. But if, if it does end up the way they're saying over the next five years, they're seeing a bit of a negative uh, return in EPS growth and forecasted for the revenue here. So I don't like to see that. It's a good thing they pay a big dividend or I would uh, probably bounce on this.
this one overall i do like the company let's look at the dividends overall and see what we're looking at now as we said payout ratio sitting at 77.64 percent we saw 73 or 74 on the other page so again i'll call it 75 percent that's right at the max where i would be i would not want it to be any higher than that i would start to get concerned that they have any room for error on this right because you want to pay down your debt you want to pay dividends out of free cash flow you want to make acquisitions which this company does a lot we saw that now dividend growth very very high dividend growth and i think this is a little skewed from last year's special dividend 41.45 percent so you'd probably want to take out you can see here right this one doesn't look the same as the others six dollars and 39 cents back in june 2022 huge special dividend payout that has that has skewed this number a bit right so it is not really 41.45 percent it is skewed by this but let's look at dividend growth overall back to august 28 2020 one dollar and five cents june 4th 2021 they jumped it up to one dollar and 13 cents here's that special dividend june 3rd 2022 right august 26 2022 they jumped it up to one dollar and 19 cents and recently mark may 26 2023 they jumped it up to 125 so if you did the grow the math on this one it's not going to be at 41.45 percent if you take out this six dollars and 39 cents now as i said i am long i do have 114.289 shares i am up on this one 11.42 percent and i would like it under that's why i said i would like it back at 80 dollars because that would be under my cost basis of 87 dollars and 88 cents per share i like it anytime it dips underneath this number so i can decrease my cost basis increase my dividend yield i have above a five percent dividend yield on this one i like the company for a high yielder though if you don't like plastics and don't like uh, companies that deal in plastics i could understand why you'd stay away from this one now this is the vested interest interest stock screener this is how i look at a company this is also to see if i'm interested in investing this is also how i set up the videos you can run through this at your leisure and that is it let me know what you think of lion do Basel. i know eastman chemicals is another one that's similar to this company you might might like a little better uh, but i like lion do Basel. very nice dividend yield does pay special dividends from time to time a little high on the dividend payout i don't like the price right now like i said i like it anything under about 87 dollars per share that's where i am looking to add it so it would need to drop significantly more for me to be interested in adding any more to my position right now i am a hold on this company let me know what you think down below as always appreciate you stopping by if you haven't done so already don't forget to show me some love hit that thumbs up ring the notification bell most importantly subscribe to the channel join the vested interest community join us on this journey to financial freedom building a community of like-minded dividend growth investors so we can share our experiences stocks like this stocks we may be avoiding tips and tricks that we've learned along the way in our dividend dividend investing journey we cannot uh, benefit from each other's investing but we can certainly learn from each other's experiences and knowledge base well this is shane signing off wishing peace and prosperity to you and yours and remember financial security comes with those who take a vested interest hey thanks for stopping by hope you have a great week and we will see you in the next one i'm not a financial advisor nothing in this presentation should be considered financial advice i'm only sharing my opinion in investing journey for educational and entertainment purposes investing involves risk you can't you should never invest any amount not comfortable losing always do your own research invest based in your situation circumstances and select criteria or exceed the advice counsel certified financial advisor